Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone watching at home. It is finally time for the Corsi's Closed Grand Finals. Malashevsky and Emrek have made it here at the end of the whole tournament. Malashevsky without dropping a single match. Emrek while only having dropped winner's finals to Malashevsky. And after a ridiculously strong loser's bracket finals from Emrek just an hour ago against Henry. I think this is going to be a very, very fun to watch grand finals, regardless of the outcome. Two of the best players of all time, if not the best players in the game right now, facing off against each other here on one of the hardest map pools in any open rank tournament. I'm Dio, and I'm joined for this cast by this one guy. Hello, Aaron. Good morning. Hey, good morning. It is a pleasure to be here. And this is going to be a hell of a match. I'm excited. I'm very excited. Um, em Emrek, best in class in precision, actually, after absolutely dominating on the Hard Rock 2 last weekend. But I think in this matchup, going to be looking a lot into the base mechanics against Maloshevsky, the DT aim and speed, the raw Nomad and Hard Rock aim throughout this pool, as well as the Hard Rock streams after setting tournament pp record on reason hard rock in the last match 833 pp was his score on reason hard rock during the match against henry so looking extremely strong throughout that match even in spite of the fact that he is going up against somebody that people are comparing to vaxe as one of the best tournament players of all time and certainly the best tournament player right now in malashevsky yeah, you know, I think you kind of hit the nail on the head with talking about the mechanics part, right? Because we get to this grand final stage, we get to this ludicrous skill cap map pool. I mean, you're seeing nine star aim, nine star tapping, and Emrek has proven himself time and again in solo play to be the best in the world in those skill sets. Um, and I think this is going to be really a tale of two very different approaches to a match. Malashevsky, you know, the comp to Vaxe with his all-around performance is going to look into, I think, more of the gimmick and niche skill sets here. Whereas Emrek, I mean, we saw him just popping off in the last match on mechanics, picking into them repeatedly, even against uh, a player as talented mechanically as Henry is. So it's going to be, I think, very important for these guys to get off on the right foot, to get the good bans that they want. You know, you probably see... Emrek again banning some reading and Malashevsky banning some speed and then to get their first picks out in uh, you know areas where they feel they can dominate because both these guys are really great front runners right so if you get an early couple points early break point anything like that anything doesn't go according to plan for a player the opposition can very definitely jump on that and take advantage of any small little uh, gains that they make in the early stages so very interested to see what the bans and the early picks look like here especially. Uh, definitely. And before we get some ban info, we're actually doing a giveaway during this stream. At the end of the Grand Finals match, you can type in the keyword secretary. This is on Twitch only. YouTube viewers, if you want to enter the giveaway, go over to Twitch, type the keyword, and keep it open. One winner will be picked at the end of Grand Finals. We've already given away one during MREC versus Enraid about an hour ago, but you need to be in chats at the end of the match in order for for the giveaway to work in order to actually collect. So make sure you type it once. If you type it twice, it will uh, exit you from the giveaway. So please type it once. If you have typed it twice, just type it a third time. Type it an odd number of times. Make sure you get in there. And be here at the end of Grand Finals to collect your prize from the giveaway. Uh, okay, well, these bans are quick and very, very expected. DT3, DT2 banned from Malashevsky. Two quick speed bans. Emrek actually FC'd DT3 for the showcase for Malashevsky's show match against Vaxe. Um, and had best act on the map, I might add. It is the best act DTFC on the map, and it is score V2 for a showcase. Uh, so that's interesting. Uh, DT2 in the same vein. Emrek's very good at speed. He's 
by far and away the better speed player. I think Malachowski has a much better chance of taking breakpoints on aim mechanics than speed mechanics here. And similarly, Emrek has a better chance of taking breakpoints on pretty much anything besides low approach rate reading against Malachowski, who, while Emrek is not bad at low approach rate reading by any stretch, he is not particularly good. That's not his strength. And for Malachowski, it is definitely a strength. Yeah, I mean, these are the exact bands we would have expected, right? I had the reading from Emrek, the speed from Malashevsky, and the uh, instant DT1 pick. I think uh, we, we anticipated this one coming, you know, the Emrek picks, he's got DT1, Nomad 5, Hard Rock 4, or, you know, the, the options for him are pretty straightforward. I think he's going to pick into the raw mechanics, like we discussed, and we get uh, AR 10.6, 8.75 star. Aim consistency DT with a couple of streams as well, and this is just the MREC playground. I mean, this is the type of thing that he made his name on in solo play, and it's the type of thing that I think he, as we've kind of discussed, has the best chance at uh, holding his points uh, on his own picks in this match. So away we go. Match number one, map number one, match number two, grand finals. I'm excited because we're starting off with a banger. This is such a good song and a fun way to start. Because I think uh, Emrek, he put up an S rank with, what, 99.24 ACK in the first yeah. uh, match this morning. So expecting great things from him once again on this. I, it may be an FC, who knows? He is, without a doubt, the highest skill cap DT aim player the game has ever seen. So hopefully he can make good on that skill cap in this map right now. He was not able to do so, actually, against Enri. Enri found, I believe it was, a couple of misses near the end, but was able to win the pick because he held combo longer than Emrek. But Emrek has already beaten his max combo from that play against Enri earlier on. It was 500 and something max combo for Emrek. Really, the streams near the end are what gave Emrek a little bit of trouble. Found a slider break on one of those streams, and that really ended up deciding the map as if he had held. I mean, he didn't miss once after that. So if he had held, he would have won the pick much closer than it looked and still very close in this match as well. Malashevsky keeping up just fine. Not quite the same accuracy, but combo still intact. And that's all that really matters. Emrek holding on to a 1x100 full combo right now. Absolutely incredible accuracy from him, but still on a knife's edge on the first pick here. And it may just come down to this dip spike near the end of the map. We're getting into that stream. Here's the buildup for it. Big jump chains into a super long 276 BPM stream here. And oh. Malashevsky is going to miss. Emrick oh. will slide a break again. But the Ack gap is, I think, going to keep it for Emrek. And I think this should be a good first pick for him. Yeah, just the comfort level at this BPM range and this star range yeah, for Emrek. A little bit higher. Able to make it through that stream pretty comfortably. Had the higher accuracy going into it as well. And, uh, well, just gonna see if he can hit the ending again because this is a chance I, unless there was a miss in that stream, I'm not sure. It could be another S rank here. Uh, 99.3, slightly improving on the accuracy. And will it be? Indeed. So this guy just S ranked this twice in two matches in the same day, back to back. Uh, you know, highest skill cap player, as, we, as you said, that the game has ever seen on this type of map. And he unfortunately suffered the slider break once again, but. The S rank comes in, the win comes in, 170k. Honestly, Malashevsky, shout out to him, keeping it very close, but obviously the comfort on a 200 and what, 75, 276, 276 BPM yeah. streams at the end, not quite there for Malashevsky the way it is for MREC. But honestly, though, if he can keep maps like this close in the early stages of this match where MREC is picking the maps that you know he's like the most confident on. Uh, I would not feel too terrible about that if I'm Malashevsky. If you can get through your opponent's best picks and keep them close, like you put a little bit of that fear into the back of their mind. And uh, give yourself maybe an advantage in your own picks, which is going to go straight into Nomad 4. Uh, yeah, it, it's Malashevsky. It's, it's you know, high star rating tech. Um, I think this plays pretty firmly into his strengths. But never count on Emrek on anything, right? Anything that's this high skill cap, the guy is going to be able to perform on. So despite this being, you know, kind of the Malashevsky favored map, I feel like, I guess the, the way you'd look at it here, right, is that the Malashevsky favored maps are not as blatantly favored to him as the MREC maps are favored to MREC. I feel like except this one, though. <laughs> this one might be... <laughs> Maybe except might, this one. <laughs> this might be the one map in the pool that is, like, just as favored, right? I mean, this is this is the specialty for Malashevsky. Um, 
And we actually saw this get played in Emrek versus Henry. This is a very hard map. The average score between the two of them was 236,000 score. They got 224k and 248k on that map. Uh, Emrek actually getting the slightly higher score there, 248k. And already you can see why the scores were so low on this map. It is absolutely bonkers. The aim control required for the streams in this in addition to the super high slider velocity and really, really long sliders all over the screen makes this so difficult to read as well. People, people don't really talk about slider yeah. clutter, but oh, that is a big chain miss from Malashevsky. That's going to keep it closer, especially in the act department. Emrek is dropping a lot more slider ends, so those chain misses really important in keeping the accuracy close. It's really interesting when I was looking when I was reviewing the map pool as we uh, build up a little bit of combo both players. But as I was reviewing the map pool, like this map actually is much more challenging to read than you'd think. The note density due to those sliders is really, really high. Your screen is just completely filled, as you said. So it's uh, an added level of difficulty that you kind of don't uh, don't think about as much. But it is working in the favor of Malachevsky as he built up some combo in that middle third in a way that Emrek was not able to match. They're about dead even on combo coming into the ending. But with that being about a 40,000 point lead, Malchevsky's not in the worst place. But there's some chain misses while Emrek builds up combo. This could almost get interesting at the end here if he holds. But a slide break is going to say no to that. And that's going to be a good first pick for Malchevsky. Man, I'm telling you, <laughs> I, was, I was pretty close though. 60k, the score is not high on either player as expected. 248 and 224 before, 281, 220 here. So... Emrek dropping just a bit compared to his earlier performance, but Malashevsky with the best score on the weekend and uh, takes his first pick. The scores are so low, it just makes it closer automatically, I feel. The combo is so valuable and so hard to hold on to. And did we just get an instant Nomad 5 pick? We just oh, got an instant Nomad 5 pick. Yeah. Yeah. Instant Nomad 5. Um, which, you know, to be fair, uh, Emrek just choked 900 on Glory Days in match, and there's a double speed ban from Malashevsky. Um, that score ended up being about 750 PP, by the way, after the slider break, uh, even in spite of the FC being yeah. 900 plus. And uh, I don't know. I feel like if you're Emrek, you just pick all of the speed maps right away, right? This is not a match, I feel like, where you can leave a pocket speed map open for the end of the match, right? If you do that, I feel like the chances of a breakpoint happening just go up and up. And so you want to keep it competitive stop any momentum from building, and I think this Nomad 5 pick is a great way of doing that. It's 260 BPM, stream and burst spam all throughout the map. It's a couple of one third patterns, but really, this is going to end up just being pure speed mechanics for both of these players in some of the simplest ways possible. Yeah. The, you know, these, these late round custom maps, I feel, are, are really crystallized into their skill set in a way that just leads to the player who's better at it winning 99% of the time. Like, there's there's little left to chance on uh, on some of these customs because they're so clearly delineated within a very, very specific skill set, and that's what you're seeing here. But that being said, clearly malashevsky has been doing something with his speed training because the guy's at 99.74 accuracy through the first third of the map and really not looking to give much away while Emrek down at 99 has fallen a very, very slight margin behind as we go towards the halfway mark. This is staying very interesting, but it's going to come down to stamina once you start getting into the back third of the map. This is three minutes long, so there is definitely a drain on that stamina that'll be occurring. And you see a big hundred drop there from Malashevsky. That's going to help out. Emrek into the lead finally like for the first time in his own second pick. Yeah, Malashevsky's burst speed is still very, very good. You see he drops half on the longer streams, not necessarily on the five to nine note burst, but on anything 16-ish note plus. And that's really where Emrek has to build those act leads is on those longer streams. He has been able to hold act during those sections. We are pretty much neck and neck. Ooh. No, 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 we are not actually. <laughs> Finally, a break comes through for <laughs> Malachevsky. As I was about to say, that misses on again one of the longer stream patterns. And Emrek able to hold now is finally with a decisive lead in this map for the first time into the one third in the back half. A lot of relatively free combo here. These one thirds are not too spaced. And so you end up getting Emrek now, seeing that he is far ahead, seeing that he has that combo lead, seeing that this one is pretty much in the bag. Even if he misses at this point, I don't know that there's... Okay, definitely not enough map now for Malachevsky to make a comeback with those misses happening. This one is 100% guaranteed for Emrek, and this is exactly what he wanted, right? A couple of quick... 
good speed nap to start him off strong, not give over an early break point. Two to one now after this big rimmer. Yeah, the oh the late oh, slider break, nice. that is a shame. That is a heck of a score regardless, but yeah, I mean, like I was saying, you know, at the start, you want to get off on the right foot. You want to have a little bit of momentum on your own picks, and having a skill set that you so clearly take a big advantage in, like Emrek does on speed in this matchup, um, is is really, really valuable. The S-Rank 98 AC, 600, 1600 combo, I mean... Emrek came to play today. He looked really great earlier, and he's looked really great on his first two picks of this match so far, so... Malashevsky going to have to be at his best on his own picks because they'll be hotly contested. And Emrek yeah, just looked ready. You know, his, his tapping, like, I, I don't know what more is, there is to say about it, but his tapping is just so good um, that it gives him a very solid basis for some picks. But uh, it's only 2-1, right? Very, very early. And Malashevsky, the next pick. Where does he go? What's going to feel like the comfy pick after the obvious Nomad 4? Well, it's going to be the Hard Rock 2. Oh, okay. Interesting wrinkle because uh, this was banned out by Enry earlier against Emrek. And look at that precision, man. Look at that precision stat. This is scary. Yeah. This is this is CS 7.8. I mean, that's precision at to the nth degree. Yeah, I believe it was last weekend in finals where Emrek had the pop-off score on the hard rock two i want to see exactly what that score was um it was like 500 something thousand if i'm if i'm uh, yeah it was it was 500k on the yeah. hard rock two last weekend higher max combo same accuracy as malashevsky reminder these two played each other in last week's winners finals malashevsky coming out the oh. victor seven to four in that match as they both Find a couple of early, early <laughs> breaks in multiple places here. A couple of slider breaks matched and a miss unmatched by Malashevsky. So Emrek now with a little bit of a combo lead. Accuracy lead with Malashevsky, though. And this map is pretty much full of this. Tons of really small jump patterns into absolutely massive, almost cross-screen jumps. And this map is nearly CS8. This is CS7.8. Usually you don't really go above 7 in tournament, uh, but this map is the exception to that rule. And Emrek is absolutely demolishing this part of the map. What is he doing right now? <laughs> Holding on through all of these back-and-forth anti-aim patterns with the massive jumps in between them. I mean... I, I, I play CS8, CS9, CS10 on a semi-regular basis. This map is completely disgusting. I don't know how he has held through that section. That is a massive lead. Both players finally trade the misses, but the damage is done. This is a huge lead for Emrek and maybe a break point early on here against Malashevsky as he continues to find misses. Yeah, I don't really see a world where Malashevsky comes back in this one. As you said, he's just continuing to break on almost every aim pattern. Emrek not doing a whole lot better now into this portion, but he built up such a big advantage that it just doesn't make a difference what happens in the last quarter here. He's up by 160, you know, 150-160k, and that's all that's going to matter because there's just no combo on Malashevsky, and this is indeed going to be that early break point. And this was my concern coming into this a little bit for how great Malashevsky is. His picks were always going to be inherently a little more volatile then the picks from Emrek, who is picking more into raw mechanics, where you can maybe be a little more consistent. Trying to be consistent on CS7.8, uh, that's just not it, unfortunately. And that is a really good score. 441k with five misses on that map is actually bonkers. Uh, and now, you know, Malashevsky's going to have to think long and hard about his future picks in this match after how that one went. And uh, just like that, Emrek with a couple points back to back gets the break point and he'll try to consolidate and he's got more tapping stuff to go into i got a figure here and there it is nomad 2. yeah it's very very important break point i think for emrek that is one of the maps that during the pre-show you know we had about an hour long pre-show before the losers bracket finals we identified Basically, Hard Rock 2, Nomad 2, Nomad 1 as the really important maps here for Emrek. I think if he's able to consolidate that breakpoint right now with this map, he is in an incredibly good spot to force the bracket reset because we already saw Tiebreaker Showcase between all three of our Grand Finals participants after the last match, and it was not close. Malashevsky has a decided advantage 
on that tiebreaker by a, a wide margin. Emrek is not winning that tiebreaker. So if it gets there, Malashevsky takes it. That means this breakpoint needs to stay intact for Emrek and this map not starting off as well as he would like with that slider break. Good accuracy for Emrek, Ooh. but better for Malashevsky is Emrek drops the chain miss on the wiggle stream at the bottom of the screen there. And this is now all for naught after the Hard Rock 2. Just devastating losses here for Emrek in the first half of the map. It all comes down to whether Malashevsky chain misses during the back half because he is broken once again in the middle and Malashevsky has the full combo with 99.3. Finally a miss, but oh, oh. okay. Uh, does that, that, that actually brings this map back to uh, life a little mind. bit for Emrek and, and he tosses it just like that. He had the, he had the opportunity there if he could hold through this, uh, this kind of third quarter into the last quarter of the map. But uh, now I think it is somewhat Jover at this point as Malashevsky takes the combo lead again. And this is going to be a wild decrease in score and combo from Emrek, who put up a 1k combo, 613k in the first match today. And he's going to be at 300,000 points, if not less, depending on how the ending goes. I mean, oh not God. something you'd expect out of an incredibly consistent player like him. And Malashevsky just did enough in the first like, two thirds of that map that it was over before really it even felt like it started before you got into the diff spike at the end, the 800 combo to 359. I'm not sure what just happened to Emrek. I've rarely seen him put up an underperformance quite of that degree by his standards. But uh, shout outs to Malashevsky, who I feel is kind of an underrated Nomad 2 player and comes in breakpoint down and does what he needs to do to get this back on uh, level footing. Yeah, Malashevsky's strength on stuff like the Nomad 2, the Nomad 1, is why we identified those maps as potentially contested picks for Emrek, and contested they were as he drops that one to Malashevsky. Like you said, I think of underperformance for Emrek dropping from the 613k against Enry down to less than 300k here against Malashevsky. Not what you want to see when your success in the Grand Finals hinges on not going to tiebreaker. So Emrek now needs to find another break point to consolidate once again, or Malashevsky will be back on higher ground against <laughs> Emrek here. All Malashevsky has to do is keep the match even, and he will eventually win tiebreaker and win the tournament. Not to mention Emrek has to win twice through bracket reset. This DT4, though... This one ain't it, Chief. Emrek ain't taking the break point on this one. Uh, Malashevsky <laughs> is unparalleled at this skill set in tournament. I think even more so than Nomad 4. This is truly his best map. Yeah, this is like, I mean, what, aim, like, aim control, I guess you could maybe call it DT. Uh, yeah, this is, Malashevsky is absolutely disgusting on this type of map with these kind of just awkward patterns and shapes. I would expect Emrek to put up a decent score on this, but I would expect Malashevsky to do unspeakably horrible things to him nonetheless, because the guy just dominates these maps week in and week out. And I mean, just through the intro, he was already up 2% accuracy. Like, I mean, his cursor control and finger control on this type of thing, ridiculous. I, this is still absurd just watching Emrek also full combo this, right? How are they? Okay, and Malashevsky actually oh. finds the first miss here. Accuracy dropped as well from Ristol, and Emrek now with combo lead has the potential to take a score lead through this map. It's not a huge combo lead, though. It's only about a 350 combo lead, and the hack is 2% in Malashevsky's favor. So as soon as he drops the combo, the score is going right back over to Malashevsky. This all hinges on this 350 combo lead for Emrek, but he is able to hold on here. These are 200 BPM streams, by the way. If you're wondering, Ooh. oh, and there's the miss aim finally for Emrek. And that score lead is going to instantly go back over to Malashevsky. There it goes beyond the five. Okay, never mind. Nope, he drops nope. combo once again. But it's a 3% it's a act difference, Aaron. It's 3%. <laughs> this is, that is that is not what you want to see if you are rooting for Emrek. But no, the break Malashevsky misses, maybe are. This might be enough. Yeah, the, the breaks just are too frequent for Malashevsky. It's not enough to make up for the accuracy. 360 combo to 159, but I mean, even with an almost 98 act to 95 act, it's just, uh, 
Emmerich holding the combo, and I mean, that's all it takes sometimes, right? You can make up for having poor Ack if you have a big combo lead. And, uh, well, Dio, how many times did we have to say that Malashevsky was just guaranteed to win this map in order to uh, make a jinx happen here? Because I think we may have just done that. Once more than Fiery Rage would need to say it, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> so about, about two or three times. About two or three times, and I think it's good enough. <laughs> Oh, well, into the last quarter we're going to go. It's still that 200 combo lead for Emrek. He's clinging to, what, a 35k score lead. I mean, it's very close considering the combo gap. If Emrek breaks once in this ending, which does not get any easier, and and also he holds, but instead they break both. It's a reset. And I think this might just have ended. I think Emrek has done enough. That combo lead through the entire middle portion. Look at the crack difference, but look at the combo lead, and that's all that mattered. If there's any breaks here at the end for Emrec, it might still go over, but barring any unfortunate misses, as this is a cooldown section, it is not as hard, this might just be enough for Emrec to take this break point. And like you said, I think we just cursed him <laughs> as pretty much uh... on the one map where I figured, you know, Malashevsky is pretty much guaranteed a win. No, Emrec is going to be able to take it instead. That is incredibly important. Once again, Emrek up a breakpoint against Maloshevsky here, four to two. It is technically a consolidated breakpoint, but he's going to have to win another map right now to truly consolidate it. If he can't win his own point afterwards, it's all for naught, but this one is oh. a good pick. Reason, Hard Rock for it. Yep. He just set tournament PP record on this not too long ago. It's interesting to go back to back Nomad 2 into Hard Rock 4 for Emmerich after the way Nomad 2 went. Um, but surely he just feels that the Nomad 2 underperformance was a complete and utter fluke after he wins the DT4 on his opponent's pick to get the break point back. And I mean, that score he set earlier was almost the most illegal thing I've ever seen happen in a tournament. And, you know, I could see it. You can see him running that back, assuming that what happened on Nomad 2 doesn't happen again. And, uh,. Somehow, I don't think it will. This map feels maybe just a little bit more comfortable, kind of falls within that stream farm type of uh, mapping style, where the spacing may be big, but the patterning is a little more comfy. But again, I like to point out, Malachevsky very solid at these stream maps, so I don't think he's gonna be giving too much up, and there's the lead off the bat. But we're so early, I mean, this is five minutes long. Five minutes long, but one thing about this map, I mean, this is a, uh, this is farm map encapsulated for sure, stream farm encapsulated. It's not easy early on, obviously you can still miss, you can find combo breaks, but it's much harder later in the map. The later on you get into this map, the more difficult the streams get, not necessarily the more space they get because, oh no, Emrek, oh, that is not what you want to see. Another set of breaks early on in the first quarter of the map. Malashevsky able to hold. The spacing doesn't necessarily get too much bigger, but the length of the streams goes up and up and up throughout this map. Being able to consistently hold through space streams of this spacing on Hard Rock is another skill entirely, and almost everyone is going to find misses in that back quarter of the map or so. So combo leads built up, score leads built up before that point are incredibly important. And right now, Malashevsky is looking to take this map, barring an unfortunate miss from him and a really solid hold from Emrek. Let's see whether anything changes during this PI time. Yeah, there's so much map left in this one. I would never want to say it's over, you know, when it's only the one break. Yeah, it's 700-ish combo. But there's so much time left and so much combo left and so you know if you drop on a stream you can miss 16 notes in a row and just all of a sudden you lose 50k score so we'll have to see what happens but both players did hold through that ki which uh doesn't i mean i guess technically it benefits malashevsky obviously but uh still <laughs> the lead nowhere near a runaway 80,000 points sure but that doesn't that doesn't end the map or anything emrek though 
absolutely has to hold for as long as he possibly can, because even if and when Malashevsky breaks, he'll have to hold. And the way Malashevsky is playing, you feel like he was only going to break on the absolute hardest portions of the map, which means you have to be working really hard to hold through them yourself if you're Emrek. And I was a little frightened by this pick, you know, after the way Nomad 2 went, and Malashevsky is kind of proving that to be a valid fear for Emrek. But... Man, they're just both comboing. I don't know. <laughs> I'm kind of yeah. transfixed here. Yeah, we're going to have to see Emrec hold through the hardest part of the map if he wants to win this, pretty much. Um, that section was mostly free, considering the difficulty of the rest of the map. And now we get oh. finally some misses from Malashevsky on the first cornering that we've had throughout the entire map. That first really tricky corner is so difficult for a lot of players to hit, especially Hard Rock. Emrek able to hold through it, Malashevsky oh. chain missing, and this might just be exactly what the doctor ordered for Emrek. Finally, some chain misses come out from Malashevsky, and he is able to hold once again. He held through this entire section the first time around, but he's not going to be able to do it again. And now we get both of them neck and neck at advantage for Emrek, but score advantage by about 55k for Malashevsky. Combo pretty much identical going into the ending, and now everything hinges on how well Malashevsky is able to handle the ending of this map. If he chain misses a bunch, if he drops four, it's possible for Emrak to win this, but that's pretty much the only way it goes over. 50k score is not going to budge without some serious drops in combo and serious holding from Emrak. And Malashevsky is just saying, please give me more aim sections in this map. Do not make me play more of those crazy streams because that's the only place that he found those breaks with the hardest flow aim patterns in the map. But here we go towards the ending. It's almost dead even on combo, but that 55k lead is not going anywhere as long as Malashevsky holds. And yeah, Emrek has just a slight combo lead, but it's not nearly enough to bring this back. And we're getting towards the point of no return here. Unless Malashevsky breaks right now, this may be yet another be four straight break point. But there goes the combo, and now it's a 700 combo lead for Emrek. It isn't enough time. It's 40,000 coming down. He's got to hit the entire ending, and darn it, he might just do it. He holds oh my God, what is he doing? He's actually pulling this back. It's down to 16, 15, 14,000 into the ending. Will there be enough time? As Malashevsky found another break, it's coming down below 10,000, below 5,000. And it looks like it's going to go over into the ending. Emrek has hit the hardest part of the entire map. He brings it back into the ending with a 1,000 combo. Takes the victory, snatches victory from the cause of defeat. Consolidates the break point for the 5-2 to two lead. Wow. Actually, what an ending from Emrek. Malashevsky had an extremely good score on that map, by the way. That is... By no means a bad score, 1,800 combo on Reason Hard Rock is about the best you can hope for in match, but Emrek just absolutely beast modes the ending and hits the entire ending of Reason with Hard Rock. Um, it's not quite the 830pp uh, choke that he had on it in the first round against Enri, but it'll do. It'll do. I don't know how you hit the entire ending of that map, but that is just absolutely disgusting. Wow. Uh, the mechanics picks certainly working out for Emrec. Uh, barring the quick Nomad 2 DT4 swap we got a little bit ago. Uh, uh, that is that is absurd. That That's actually just absurd. What a score. And now, on to the Hard Rock 3 pick for Malashevsky. Just because it's Hard Rock does not mean it's mechanics. Sakura Trip. This is one of the old, classic, unplayable tech maps. Yeah, this was uh, unpicked earlier. This was, in, this was in Hippo Cup, so you know it's going to be crazy. I feel like you know a map is going to be kind of nuts if it was a Hippo Cup late round pick. Um, you know, Malashevsky kind of going back to the classics. Right, just really difficult tech. He did very well, you know, obviously on the Nomad 4. Uh, well, relatively speaking, I suppose, because 280k is not- The map's just hard, right? So. Great, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> that map's just hard. But uh, so, you know, he says, all right, we're 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 going like as far away from mechanics. We're just going to the diametric opposition of mechanics because I don't want to have to deal with Emrec on anything uh, that is going to be raw tapping. But, uh, We'll have to see how this plays out. We get, by the way, back-to-back five-minute-long hard rock maps. So this is going to be 10 minutes for two picks. 
uh, it's a drain, I feel, on on the both mental and physical stamina a little bit, even if the map isn't that mechanically demanding. It's just a long time to be very, very, very concentrated in Hard Rock. Hard Rock pool is long. The Hard Rock pool is very long. Like Even aside from these two picks, Hard Rock 1 is another three minutes, and then you get another two minutes out of Hard Rock 2. So this is a 15 and a half minute Hard Rock pool, almost 16 minutes, actually. Uh, compare that to the Nomad pool which in and of itself is only, what is that? 11, 12, uh, 13, uh, the, the Nomad pool is about the same length. And as I do that, we get we do get a break from Emrak. That is expected on this map though. Malashevsky is favored pretty heavily to win a pick like this. You're expecting him to bring out his biggest guns when he is down the break point like this. And Frankly, if you're rooting for a close match, you're rooting for him to win this pick. This is exactly where he shines. And if you want a good competitive grand finals and bracket reset, this is where you want to see him pop off is on this one. Quite a lot of places for him to pop off given the map is five minutes, Ooh. unless he breaks on absolute air. The miss on a random jump during the slower section might just be his downfall as Emrek able to hit all of the wiggles and everything leading into this more difficult section. If Emrek can hold the combo during oh. this part, he might actually be able to take another breakpoint off of Malashevsky. What is Emrek cooking today? He is actually <laughs> popping off on so many maps. The Nomad 2 aside, finally a slider break for him on this Hard Rock 3 during the second Ki time. A little bit of a combo lead though for Malashevsky is all he's gonna need to bring the score lead back into his favor. Yeah, that, the accuracy lead once again for Malashevsky doing a lot of the heavy lifting. Um, well, not anymore as he drops behind. He was ahead, I promise. But uh, now it just goes back to Emrick. You know, it, it feels like this one is just as back and forth as it comes. Whenever one player misses, the other seems to have some combo and vice versa. So it's just very, very finely balanced. It's 15k, not even, as the lead to Malashevsky as we get into a uh, nice, long, relaxing slider here. It's 16,000 points. It's 80 combo to 60, but most of that just from this giant long slider's ticks. But a break from Emrek, and Malashevsky is going to claw away at every little bit of advantage he can take in this map because it has been so contested the entire way through. Two thirds down, still just under a third of the map to go, and still under 20,000 points separating the players. This is still anybody's game as Malashevsky again. He's having a little aim trouble in the hard rock. It feels like he was struggling with that on uh, on the small circle hard rock. He was having a little trouble with it here as well, but fortunately, Emrek trades it out. This this is just so I don't know. This is going yeah. either, going either way. <laughs> uh, this map is this map is wild. It's still super close. It's only a 30k, not even a 30k score difference between these two players right now. Accuracy lead helping a little bit here for Malashevsky. Combo lead helping a bit as well. Finally, another miss comes through for him, though. Is it matched by Emrek? A little bit more map left. If he holds, he could take this break point, but uh, it's really tough to hold through the ending of this map. You're going to have to god mode once again if you actually want to hold this combo. Well, I think he's done it now. This is all yeah. cooldown. Is there enough map left is the question, and I think the answer is no. The max combo on a five-minute map like this is too high for only a 200 combo lead to really do much at this point. It's going to be close, but I think this is still safe for Malashevsky. We'll see right into the last sliver of map here. Still a 20k score leader, so... And as that it's closes coming in, down, 15k, Dio. It's coming 10k... Down. Is there enough time? I don't think there it's is, but it's going to be close. Down. 5K! Oh no, there's not enough time. God. One note left. 3K <laughs> at the bottom of the screen. 2,904 <laughs> points. 2,904 is the score difference for Malachevsky <laughs> by the end of it. That 30K buffer is exactly what he needed going into oh. the ending, apparently. Any less than that. 25K, and it would have been the break point for Emrek, but he barely holds on to the lead. Oh, Damn, this man. match is close. <laughs> that was Damn. Uh, I mean, <laughs> on a five minute long map to come down to 3,000 points in the last few combo, I mean, what more could you ask for out of your grand finals? I don't know. Certainly not much. You almost feel for Emrek on that one with the when you consider the uh, miscount difference on that map, but Malashevsky had that big max combo lead by, uh, what, 260 almost.
And that was it. That was what it took. And I mean, maybe a slight accuracy lead as well. I mean, literally like the act lead, the dis, the, or versus the miscount. And that's all it was. I mean, close as it gets. So one point back, but Emrek's still in control. Still does have that break point advantage. Crucially, despite everything that we just saw, uh, the, the, that was just the two players winning their own picks. You know what I mean? Like after 10 minutes, it was, it just ends up with them winning their own picks. <laughs> it, like there's no pictures on the scorecard. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Okay. Huh. That was extremely close. We go back into another mechanics pick for Emrek to be expected. Honestly speaking, it is the hard rock one. This one's a little bit more straightforward than the no mod one of the same pool. It's more akin to something like we saw in the DT one, obviously a lot lower BPM. Uh, this one, I believe, 211 BPM, still eight and a half stars as an aim map is a bit absurd. Uh, CS 5.5 here, and I think this is a good move for Emrek. You have already won Hard Rock 2 and Hard Rock 4. I think going into something like the Hard Rock 1, where, you know, you are the best aim player in the game, is a pretty solid move. Obviously not to say that Malashevsky is bad at aim, but if you're talking about raw aim skill cap, I don't think there's a lot of other players who can contest Emrek on that field, right? So looking for Emrek to win his own pick once again, looking for Malashevsky to take a break point here on this hard rock one, although an early, early break for Malashevsky. Gonna partially play towards Emrek. Not by a lot though, not gonna impact the score all that much. And this map is very straightforward. It's big jumps, it's bursts and streams occasionally because the song calls for it, but it's a custom map for this grand finals and you know what you're getting with a lot of customs. This is as straightforward, consistent hard rock aim as possible. Yeah, and the way this match has gone so far through the first uh, eight maps, it feels like this really plays into Emrek's strengths because for as great as he is, Malashevsky feels like he's not having maybe his best aim day. He has had some somewhat uncharacteristic miss aims so far. Um, but that, as I say, that Emrek finds his first break of this map, so it's going to kind of temper that advantage. The lead should be able to go back over to Malashevsky with a couple hundred combo in his favor. And Emrek dropping the accuracy down a tad bit. But we'll see how the aim consistency plays out, because as you said, this is a custom Hard Rock 1. You know what you're getting into, and uh, it's just going to be screen jumps for, you know, three and a half minutes, and, and plenty of them. So, the best aim consistency player out there is going to try his hand, but for now, it is Melashevsky taking that lead, that crucial break from Emrek that he held through, but there's a miss aim from Melashevsky, and Emrek... Takes the combo lead back, and he will take the score lead back shortly. Misses like that hurt to see, man. Right in the middle yeah. of the map, you know exactly Ooh. it's kind of it's kind of Jover after you miss <laughs> on an aim map right in the middle like that. You can see the frustration from Malashevsky. I don't want to say it's completely over because the score lead is really low, but that's what it feels like when you're playing through it and you miss in a place like that. Obviously, this diff spike can still force misses out of Emrek as well. We'll see if he is able to hold through everything in it. Finally made it through the streams. Can he hold through the next Ki time is the biggest question. Hits the star jumps, hits the transition into the Ki time, and if he's able to hold through this part, I think there's no question he takes this point. To be expected, it's his pick, but would put him at match point against Malashevsky here. I think a lot of people really expected Malashevsky to continue his streak of dominance and not lose to anyone in Grand Finals, but Emrek here to prove that Malashevsky is not unbeatable. And I think he's pretty much done it at this point. Finally gets to that match point. Still one more pick to go for Emrek to get to this bracket reset, but Malashevsky now back against the wall, has to win three in a row to get to that tiebreaker and close out Grand Finals without losing a match. Does still have that bracket reset, even if he loses this first round. But for the player favorited to win the tournament, to be down match point six to three in this match, I think is definitely an upset of expectations here to start off. And especially after we saw last week, he won their matchup seven to four in that winner's final. 
Um, and it just felt like Malashevsky, you know, kind of was just ascending to that point of near unbeatable. You know, the aura about him has grown so much. But uh, Emrek showing why, uh, you know, he's number one in the world for a reason. He's the best player in terms of just raw skill that I think the game has ever seen. And there's a lot of picks in this pool that suit him quite well on top of being able to pull out the break points. So if there was ever a time for somebody to be able to pull out this kind of performance against Malashevsky, this would be the place for it. And he's going to go hidden three is Malashevsky back against the wall, as you said, into uh, into a very, very challenging hidden pick. But I like this one a lot for him. And I think it's crucial to, to discuss as well. You know, we're obviously not there yet, but it seems to be trending that direction. Uh, it's crucial as well to note that we have the bracket reset for Malashevsky, and he can learn a lot from having seen the losers final earlier and from having played through a minimum um, of 10 maps in this match. He's got a lot of info on what Emrek's going to pick, what he's going to do well on, what Malashevsky himself is going to do well on. So there's a lot to be learned here, and you can adapt going into that reset if you end up needing it. But with Emrek playing at the level that he is today, it almost feels like the question becomes whether or not it matters. You can have all the information in the world on your opponent, but if they're just simply putting up better scores than you're capable of, it's meaningless. So Malashevsky really needs to sort some things out here, and uh, this is a good place, I think, for him to start that. This is definitely a good pick for Malashevsky. Like you said, one of the... Uh ridiculously difficult hidden picks. I feel like the hidden tech picks in the pool are absolutely disgusting. This match is really, really hard. The tech picks in general in the pool are incredibly difficult. Uh, even for players like Malashevsky and Emrek. Oh, Malashevsky oh. chain missing that entire that. sequence yeah. though. Did he hit a single circle in that? He I hit like one 100. <laughs> he had a, like a oh, couple of hundreds in that part. But that is not what you want to see going in this part. Emrek has already beaten his score from last match against Emrek. He finally drops misses. But his score last match was 220k. He is already way above that at this point. Oh and goodness. Malashevsky is not able to find the combo in this map. If he keeps missing like this, this is already bracket reset guaranteed for Emrek. This is match point. He's down 90,000 score, 85,000 score for Malashevsky right now. And he needs to hold whatever combo he, ha he can during the ending here, or this will be bracket reset for Emrek, and a 1v1 That's loss it. now guaranteed for Malashevsky after that drop. We're going to bracket reset in the grand finals. And on the and, and on the back of just outrageous play from Emrek, you can say that Malashevsky may not be at his absolute best, but you can also say that Emrek may well be at his best. This is some of the most incredible performance I've seen from Emrek in any tournament. The way he has played in this first set, unbelievable. 200k win to close it out. I mean, he just looked unstoppable the entire way through. Malashevsky never really got a foothold in many of these late maps. And now it's almost just back to the drawing board if you're Malashevsky because you lost stuff that you were not expected to. And Emrek played out of his mind. And man, oh man, <laughs> I thought this would be much closer than a 7-3 first set. Emrek just dominant. Emrek beat Enri 7 to 3 and has now beaten Malashevsky 7 3. Granted, we have bracket reset, but this level of pop off from Emrek, I feel like, is a statement weekend. Enri had his statement weekend in semifinals and finals. Emrek is having his statement weekend right now saying, I can be the best player in every aspect of this game if I choose to be. And that is certainly what it looks like looking at this match. A couple of mispicks, I think, or one mispick, I think, from Malashevsky in the Hard Rock 2. I think that map, after the last couple of Hard Rock weekends for Emrek, looks like an Emrek pick. But everything else, every other breakpoint that Emrek took was a map that, on paper, Malashevsky should win those maps, looking at the matchup, looking at the skill sets of the two players. And Emrek, just as you said, playing out of his mind, more than doubled, more than doubled his score on the hidden three compared to the match with Enri not two hours ago. This guy is absolutely popping off right now. And regardless of whether 
other players are playing at their best or not, that doesn't matter. Emrek is here to show that he is the best in the game right now. And this is certainly halfway... He is certainly halfway there right now. That was an absolutely disgusting first match from Emrek. He played incredibly well during that match. Maloshevsky also... Some really, really good plays, particularly on that Nomad 2. He looked incredibly good. A lot of close maps in this matchup as well. The Hard Rock 4 score for Malashevsky certainly could have been a break point as well. But Emrek just ever so slightly better. Yeah, it it really just comes down to the little things, you know, the those close maps. Um, I, I I keep going back to just thinking about the skill cap of it all. And, you know, when you're in these 1v1 scenarios, that's all that matters. And when you throw players against a nine-star pool, sometimes, you know, you have Emrek, who is the high skill cap player. It's just that little bit of difference. The, you know, it's the slightly harder patterning that can give you that three to 5,000 point advantage. It takes me back all the way to 2021 YSC when Emrek won Yaz's Summer Cup, which was like his biggest 1v1 that I can yeah. think of tournament win when I've thought ever since then that Emrek could be the best tournament player in the world if he wanted to be because his skill cap is just so incredibly high compared to literally what all but maybe one or two people in the world and we had thought Malashevsky might be one of those players and it looked that way in the winner's final last week but you just amp up these pools that little bit more and uh, all of a sudden, you flip the script around completely, going from 7-4 Malachowski now to 7-3 Emrek, as he really does realize what he's capable of, and we all see it live here on the big screen. And now, with a little break in between, if you're Malachowski, I think you've got to do some thinking, right? Where am I going? What picks am I keeping? What picks am I maybe changing? After dropping a couple of break points and a couple of maybe underperformances, it's going to be a very interesting strategic approach, I think, going into the reset. Emrek can pick everything the same, pretty much, except maybe... And, and like, I would even keep the Nomad, too, I think, if I were him. Whereas Malashevsky, think you you're thinking about stuff. Yeah, I think... And we can take a... We can take this slight break in between to talk about this, because we got, we got five minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, so don't go anywhere. By the way, we're back in five minutes. Bracket reset in six minutes and 48, 47, <laughs> 46, 45, etc. So make sure you stay here, because the continuation of this match is going to happen right afterwards. Emrek now favored, I think, to win this, because I think if that match was closer, if that was like 7-5 or something, I think you say, okay, you fix the Hard Rock 2 mispick for Malashevsky, and you can probably force the tiebreaker pretty easily and take this match. But that was 7-3. That was not quite as close. I think you keep the DT4 pick. I think you can... I think you can keep the DT4 pick, and I think you can keep the... Uh, I, I don't know. Do you keep the Hidden 3 pick after that, actually, is my question. Because Emrek showed that he can like, pop off to an absurd degree on that map. I feel like you probably do if you're Malashevsky, and that that early chain miss at the start of the map, as soon as it transitioned into the hard part, pretty much decided the map. I, f I feel like that was pretty much the deciding factor there. And if Malashevsky doesn't chain miss that, he can build up similar combo. But I, I don't know your thoughts exactly. I think keep the DT4, scrap the hard rock 2, maybe keep the double, t uh, the hidden 3. Yeah, the, I think the hidden three and then also like the hidden four, I think kind of are, are both a little bit of toss ups because, I mean, if you're Malashevsky watching the losers final and you see Emrek putting up 224k on hidden three um, and then winning, but only with 394k on hidden four, I like I think if you're Malashevsky and you know your skill set and you know your expectations, like both of those look on paper like good picks for you. But when all of a sudden Emrek is dropping a 450k versus your 248k on that same hidden three, it it raises the question. It really does. I might flip that out, but the question is, what do you replace it with? Like, what map looks any better? Yeah, I th I think I think hidden, you definitely. Like, do you just pick hidden one? I, th I think hidden one actually. <laughs> yeah, I think hidden one. I think hidden one, hidden four are actually very good picks here. Um, hidden four is really hard um we saw it played in emrek versus enry i believe 
that map looked good, but I think that 400k on that map is a beatable score. So, especially with how good Malashevsky has looked on stuff like the Nomad 2, I don't think you're struggling too much with the stream stamina on something like that. It's more so the finger control, the one-third aim, and the ridiculous, like, cut flow aim in that map. So... I think that's still a pretty good pick for Malashevsky. I, th I think he could look to replace it with something like the Hidden Four, and I think he would do very well on that. I'm also thinking, and hear me out, let me cook. <laughs> let, me, let me cook. All Don't right. ban DT2. Change the ban away from yeah. DT2. I think the DT3 ban is really good. Um, because Emrek already FC'd that for a showcase, right? Like, he has the uh, highest act DTFC on that map, so you, you, you leave that banned. But I think banning, instead of that, something like either the DT1 or maybe even Hard Rock 2, you know you lose those picks. So changing that out, depending on how good your stamina is, if you can win the Nomad 2, I think you can win the DT2 as well. Emrek, obviously very good on stuff like that, but... You know, trading that ban out for one of the other maps that you think is a, kind of a guaranteed loss after the first round of Grand Finals, I think is a smart move for Malashevsky, keeping the DT3 ban, of course. Um, It's a Nomad 5 ban angle. Oh, true. Yeah. I actually no, that, that think it's works. a Nomad 5 ban angle. That was like a 300k win for Emrek. I think it might be a Nomad 5 ban angle for Malashevsky. Also... A map that has gone unmentioned, and I think we just kind of overlooked maybe a little bit, is Nomad 3. Because Emrek put up 258k against Enri on the Nomad 3 in the first match of the day. And it did not get picked or banned in this first set of the Grand Finals. And we know Malashevsky is one of the world's best Nomad 3 players. The question then is, why doesn't he pick it in the yeah, first Yeah, I don't... Grand I'm Finals, very curious so. why he didn't pick that in the first set, but you got to think he might now be considering it going into the reset. I feel like you have to after the first round of Grand Finals goes that poorly, right? It is a 7-3 loss. That is not a super close scoreline, so you have to change it up at, in some way. Um, I, I think the Nomad 3 pick definitely has to be a part of that, at least. So, change out the DT2 ban for potentially Nomad 5, potentially Tard Rock 2, potentially DT1, whatever. Something among the maps that he lost by a wide margin, right? Or that you expect to lose by a wide margin once again. Um, pull in the Nomad 3, keep the Nomad 4, maybe pull in Hidden 1 and Hidden 4. Um, obviously keep the Hard Rock 3 and probably keep the DT4 for Malashevsky. Does Emrek do anything different then? He already won, but you know there's going to be strategy change from Malashevsky. So what is what does it look like from his side on the adaptations? Like, do we see Nomad 1 come out? Do we see, I don't think we see any band swaps, but do we see Nomad 1 come out? Do we see earlier picks into the Hard Rocks, for example, rather than the DTs? I'm not sure. Um, I think... If you're Emrek, whatever the speed options are, you pick those first. Regardless of whether or not Malashevsky changes bands, I think Emrek, I think you go, you know, whatever's available between like Nomad, well, not even speed, but like tapping Nomad 2, Hard Rock 4, DT2, DT3, Nomad 5, whatever of those are up, maybe with the exception of Hard Rock 4, considering how that went, like I think he gets better at Nomad 2. I don't worry about him underperforming on that twice in a row. Yeah. I think DC1 was super close, so I'm not sure how you're necessarily feeling on that if you're Emrek, but you S-ranked it twice in a row, so clearly you're confident on it. Look, his score went up by 300k the first time. Obviously, that means the next time he plays it, he gets 1.1 mil, right? So I think, <laughs> yeah, I think he's actually just going to SS it this time. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 1.1 1, 1. 1 you can get without an SS. 1.1 1. 1 is doable. Right? That's true. Like, two, what, how, what do you have to get for that? Like, four 100s or something? Um, uh, I, think, I think it's like 98.7 or something like that yeah. is 1.1 1. 1 mil. It, it, it's a pretty lenient. Uh, it's pretty lenient. So. Also, um, what do we think about AIM? Nomad 1, Hard Rock 1. Um, notwithstanding the DT1 as discussed, but Nomad yeah. 1, Hard Rock 1, based on how the first set went, I need to feel like pretty MREC favored as we're watching it's... Hard Rock 1 here. 
I think it's a little closer than it might appear on paper. Like, yeah, it's 560 max combo and 97 ack and 12 misses on the MP link for Meloshevsky, but he basically stopped trying at the end of the Hard Rock one. After he missed in the middle, it felt like he just thought it was Jover and did not try as much anymore. Um, so I think if that miss does not happen on that Kiai time right in the middle of the map, I think it's probably about to show up on screen, actually. Um, this one miss during this Kiai time, I feel like, decided that map for him. And I think if he doesn't miss here, he might actually just win the pick. So there it is. I think it's, yeah, that miss. See? <laughs> See? Oh, that he felt not so happy. bad. Yeah, he was tilted after that one for sure. <laughs> he really was. So I feel like it's not as bad. I feel like the normal aim consistency is not as bad on paper for Maloshevsky as it might seem at first glance. I think specifically that Nomad one is a trap for Emrek because that <laughs> map is like part tech. <laughs> it's like yeah. part tech, part speed map, part slider gimmick, um, part graveyard not, not really a jump one. map. Yeah, it's yeah, very not, weird. Not, not really a normal nomad one. So I, I feel like you don't pick that nomad one if you're Emrek. I feel like the picks largely stay the same. But I, I do agree. I think the aim is more of a toss up than a speed than speed for Emrek or tapping. I suppose. Yeah, is yeah. What we're gonna call it. Well. Three minutes left until the next match. I think we've said uh, pretty much everything, unless yep. you have other points to add. Okay. Yeah, I think covered the entire pool. Are there any maps that we didn't touch on at all? I think we got through uh, all of them by this point. But we're not talking about Nomad 6 Hidden 2, because those are banned. They're staying yeah, banned. Yeah, those are gone. Uh, 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 tiebreakers, again, Maloshevsky favored. They played it in a show match, and Maloshevsky won by, like, 70k. So it's not... Emrek is not letting it get to tiebreaker. He cannot. So... Aside from that, yeah, we, we have a we, couple of we, other uh, housekeeping items to discuss that we can go over, and then I think we'll take a quick break and grab some water before we get into our next match here. We are doing a giveaway for a Corsace Secretary Son keychain. If you want to enter that, you type Secretary in chat once. Just type it <laughs> once. If you type it a second time, it disqualifies you from the giveaway. You can type it a third time. So essentially just type it an odd number of times in chat by itself if you haven't done so already. It's only for viewers on Twitch if you're on YouTube, L. Donate to Corsace. Also, if you like seeing content like this, tournaments like this, continuing to do stuff like MCA as well as the Corsace Open and Corsace Closed. And last but not least, we are going to also be partnered with Momokai for the Corsace Closed Special Edition of the Momokai Tap Trio keypad. If you want to support Corsace and get yourself a nice keypad from Momokai, you can go to momokai.com forward slash Corsace and get the Corsace Closed 2023 Limited Edition Tap Trio keypad from Momokai. And without any further ado, we'll be back in one minute and 35 seconds for the bracket reset.
And welcome back, everyone, to the grand finals of Corsace Close 2023 as we head into the bracket reset match after seeing an absolute display of dominance from world number one MREC over Malashevsky, sending him to the loser's bracket side for this reset. We are prepared now for the match that will decide it all. One best of 13 for all the marbles in this one. Emrek looked incredible. Malashevsky definitely had some thinking to do and maybe some strategy to reconsider heading into this second part of this match. And I am very interested to see what kind of adaptations we see in the bands and the picks of this one. I am still this one guy. And on the other side is still Dio. We talked about a lot of things, and what do you want to think here if you are Emrek and if you are Malashevsky coming back into the bracket reset after a little break in between? I mean, as we kind of already talked about, I feel like if you are Malashevsky, you need a couple of different picks. You probably don't want that Hard Rock 2 as a pick anymore after what Emrek did on that map. And you probably also want to maybe switch up your bands swap out the DT2 for something more like the Nomad 5 or the DT1 or that Hard Rock 2, speaking of. Amrek, I think, keeping the bands the same and keeping the picks largely the same, focusing on the tapping maps, the stream maps, the big flowing streams of Reason and similar maps like that, as well as any speed picks left in the pool, and then transitioning into the Hard Rock aim and similar skill sets afterwards, abusing mechanics as much as possible against Malashevsky, who is the far better gimmick player in this matchup, but who had faltered a few times on some of those more gimmicky picks in the second half of that grand finals match. And that ban, by the way, I, is correct on your screen. That is a hidden two ban nah. from, uh, wait, no, no, nah. no. I think that's, no, I think that's wrong. I uh, think apparently they are... are keeping the same bands. I think yeah. that is DT2, DT3, Maloshevsky and hidden two, no mod six from Emrek. Um, I, I think we have been yeah. fed wrong information <laughs> by, by our referee here. So uh, we'll get that swapped around. If they are keeping the same bands, then uh, it is definitely going to be DT2, DT3 band away from Malashevsky. So not actually changing up the bands at all. Um, okay, there we go. Yeah. That, that, is, that is correct information. <laughs> all right. Uh, uh, DT2 think... got banned twice. What the heck? <laughs> <laughs> A uh, little, little bit of a uh, little bit of tomfoolery, <laughs> but we'll, we'll get spreading into it. We'll misinformation. Get into it. Yeah, uh, first pick from Malashevsky DT one. Also, that might be a thing. That might be a thing after those bits. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. This is just no one for first pick, right? Oh, oh, there no it is. Finally, yes. there we go. Yes, yes. Notably uh, absent from the previous match is Nomad three. Malashevsky very, very good on alt maps and Emrek. Played this against Enry, did not have a good time. Enry had a very good time. Emrek got 260k, so I'm looking forward to what Malashevsky can do on this. Malashevsky uh, decided to head to the kitchen in between uh, in between <laughs> these two matches, and we're going to see what that man can cook up for us here in this reset. I love this quick adaptation, a new pick as the first map of the reset. He needed to do something differently. Wow, this is loud. Hang on. I, uh, okay. Uh, he needed to do some adapting, and this is definitely a very good direction to go, I think, to start off this set. As already, we see a multiple chain misses from Emrek, and we're not even 250 combo in. Yeah, this is pretty much a repeat of what happened to Emrek during the match against Enry, is that his opponent is really good at alt maps, and he is not. This is definitely not a specialty for Emrek, and Malashevsky also very good at this, so able to take full advantage of that lack of alt specialization from Emrek here. My question is, does Malashevsky put up a score like what Enry did on this? We saw Enry hit the entire diff spike on this map uh, and get over 700k on this map. Notably, this map is uh, relatively easy during the first half, if you can believe it. Uh, this is actually the easy part. This is all relatively easy stuff. Uh, Emrek still holding on, by the way, to pretty high combo. So if we do see an uncharacteristic miss out of Malashevsky, 
This could still go MREX's way. There is combo held by him right now into another more difficult section in this PI time with all the wiggles and back and forths in this part. Really showing off oh. that the map does get more difficult. Both of them actually hit that entire section. It is still very close between these two players. I'm getting a little bit nervous here already just watching this with the 900 and 700 combos and how tricky the patterns are in these KIs. But uh, now you get a little free combo here on these slider patterns. So both players just gonna continue to build up and that's what makes this so terrifying. When you get into that diff spike, the combos may be so large that one miss can end it out of nowhere. Oh man, Emrek has already beaten his old score, by the way, by uh, what, 30,000 points. But there he goes oh. on the kick slider jump pattern and Malashevsky of course holds through it because what else? Would you expect anything less from the man? And I think the answer to that is very definitely no. And that map may just have ended right then and there. Yeah, I think this one's over already. Maloshevsky coming out swinging with the first pick on this Nomad 3. He's still full comboing. 98.5 accuracy on this play right now. Hits one of the diff spikes. Can he hold on even longer? Can he FC this? Does he no everything? Oh my, oh my god. god. He does it again. Emery in the first <laughs> round in Loser's Bracket Finals. Malashevsky here in Bracket Reset. Both of our tech specialists in Grand Finals able to hit the entire diff spike there. They are actually just disgusting oh, oh. on this map, man. That is sick, nasty play from Maloshevsky on this one. Can he full combo is now the question. He's already won the pick. There's no question ah. about that. He will not FC though, as this ending still very, very difficult. This is more on par with the dip spike than the previous PI times as, I mean, just look nah. at the spacing in this ending section. This is beyond the realm of human understanding though. That oh, one miss in the ending from Maloshevsky. What a freaking play to open it up, though, man. The first map of the set, and he's going to put up at least 730k on one of the hardest, diff spikiest Nomad 3s you're ever likely to see. All right. Well, Malashevsky went and, you know, got a bottle of his secret stuff to drink in between these sets because, man, he just came out of the gates like you would not believe and that is a huge win to start off the bracket reset. Yeah, that was uh, that was something else. Three miss, three yeah. miss, three misses. from Malashevsky on that map. Uh, I might add seventeen miss from Henry earlier, uh, just for a point of comparison. Yeah, and he's uh, yeah. <laughs> he's pretty good. He's pretty uh. good at all. <laughs> that was that was a really nasty score. Not super surprising to see this as a first pick from Emrak. This was the first pick last time. Also, I mean. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? He already won it once. Actually, has won it twice. Uh, or no, once, excuse me. He did yeah, lose once. this against Henry. It was not the first pick. Um, but he has already won it once against Maloshevsky. And I suppose is just sticking with what has already worked for him. The score he set on this was about 746 PP in the previous match. A one slider break choke with 10 100s on Glory Days. 900 choke. So... Look, looking for him to maybe get 900 in match, you know? If he can just FC this real quick, it'd be good. It'd be cool to see. Uh, third tries the charm, as third, they third say. Third charm. Third time's charm. Third time's the charm here. And uh, early break from Malashevsky. Going to give a small opening advantage to Emrek. But, you know, if uh, if there were ever somebody to get a 900 on a DC1 in a match, I think uh, Emrek right at the top of that list. See if he can make it through that. Stupid stream with a couple of buzz sliders. I, I don't know. It's uh, a very easily chokeable spot of the map. Malashevsky kept this very close, by the way. I, I want to know, like, for the vast majority of the map last time this was played, Malashevsky kept it very much in touch. So not uh, not giving up too much on this particular pick, but certainly uh, as much within MREX wheelhouse as any map can be. So it's going to be favored on this once again. And starting off right with some very high accuracy and a small combo lead through the first ki. This a rank FC? Oh no, that's that's a one break joke for uh, yeah. Maloshevsky. Yeah. yeah, okay. Didn't actually catch that early, early break for Maloshevsky. Probably won't matter all that much though. Honestly speaking, I think either way, either if Emrek pops off or 
if it is close throughout. It probably will not be a deciding factor, but uh, I don't know. I've, I've cursed harder things to curse before, <laughs> so you know, maybe it will. Um, still on the 1-100 full combo for Emrek. He held this 1-100 full combo also in the last round while he was uh, first picking this map against Malashevsky in the first round of Grand Finals until pretty much the stream also, I think, is when he finally started to drop back again in the first round of Grand Finals. See if that holds true and bracket reset as well. Not going to matter when he drops the act, though. Malashevsky already <laughs> dropping on the jumps, and that is going to guarantee the point for Emrek. We will be one-to-one -one at the end of this. Now, I will shut up so I don't curse anything. Yeah, uh, that was like the same spot as Malchewski broke in the Hard Rock one last time. Here we go, into the jumps, into the stream. Will Emrek be able to hit it this time and hold the act as well? No, he nope. will not once again! The I buzz every time, catch him out. Oh. oh my lord, he just has no luck on this map, dude. If he, F if he FCs the ending again and S ranks this three times in one day in matches without an FC, I am going to uh, shed perhaps one single solitary tier for the poor lad from Australia. But uh, the pick is certainly well within hand for Emrek, and that's what really matters here. Slider breaks, be damned. Ending FC, be damned. He does it again the third time in Better act the this time. day. Better act this time. 9 100 is 99.39. <laughs> um, but once again, the buzz sliders oh cut him down, and it's a third straight S rank. And... Uh, a point in his favor, but man, I'm sure he would have liked that FC. How annoyed would you be if you did uh, what he just did? Oh my goodness. <laughs> three times in a row, I'd be a little bit peeved, uh, but I won the map two out of three times, so you know, I'm not I'm not too peeved, but like, come on, man, just give me my score already, right? Damn buzz slider. It's not uh, even the stream, it's the buzz sliders right afterwards. He uh and it's the exact releases same. off the first or the second buzz slider too early. Uh, it's the exact same man. one. It's ten thirty-three yeah. combo every time. Well, twice. What are you going to do? <laughs> Not meant to be, I suppose. Nomad 4 pick, definitely meant to be for Malashevsky, though. Uh, who could have possibly seen this I coming? I never <laughs> could have imagined that Malashevsky would second pick this. If he didn't first pick it, he was certainly yeah. second picking it. Um, yo, okay, so just a quick note, though, regarding this map. Played in the first set, first pick for Malashevsky. 280k, 13 misses, versus Emrek, 220k, 6 misses. Emrek has shown that he can play this. The problem is he hasn't shown that he can play this as well as Malashevsky, and that's really what matters. Yeah, Emrek did also get 248k against Enri. Eight misses on that play as well. So the potential is there for either of these players to get a really good score. Accuracy, I think, is the thing holding Emrek back, though. 88, or sorry, 91 ack against Enri, 90 ack against Malashevsky. So accuracy really playing an important factor, I feel like, for Maloshevsky to be able to take this pick. His ability to follow sliders and hit slider ends is something not a lot of players can replicate, especially in tournament. Uh, being able to both act sliders with score V2 on the slider head and hold the slider ends to an extent that you can actually keep accuracy on a lot of really high velocity sliders is incredibly difficult. And this pick also quite hard to read with how long a lot of these sliders are. We talked about this in the first one as well, but the clutter from all of these sliders on your screen is really, really ridiculous. And both of them now holding about the same combo, actually higher combo for Emrek, but that Ack lead Ack. for Malashevsky is 5%, man! Why is he at 96% accuracy on this? I don't understand. Um, he is already beating his score from the previous set, and Emrek is slider breaking. So Dude. this is going to be the win for Malashevsky. The question is by how much. It's not going to be an FC, of course, but the accuracy is... Dude! I... Yeah, Dude. this is absurd <laughs> act for Malashevsky. He is still going. He is still holding no. this combo. 600 max combo on this. The next best out of anyone is 322 oh max my. combo for Enry. More than double. He hits the ending. And he holds, what ack is that exactly? 95.65% ack by the end of the map. Uh, yeah, that's a good run. That is an <laughs> incredible run out of Malashevsky there. Wow. Every that's zero right. missed, by the way. <laughs> zero miss, zero one miss. Zero miss and one miss. Uh, I just want to <laughs> say that I just want to say that, that Emmerich score is the second best score of the day on this map. Yeah. <laughs> right? Like, yeah, that, that is. That is the second best score of the day. <laughs> and just, he got, uh, just gapped. Uh, 
and, and he got beat by that much. I that okay. It's it's five ten k ninety five ac, and that is probably one of the best slider tech scores I've ever seen in a tournament map. I'm just yeah. gonna say that like that is unbelievable for Malashevsky. I don't know how you pull that off in a match. Yeah, and that uh, was that, that was actually absurd. Uh, I have to agree. That's one of the best slider tech scores I've ever seen in a match. That was. That was silly. Uh, now onto Nomad 5, which is also a bit silly. I don't think quite as hard as Nomad 4, but uh, quite silly. 260 BPM first and stream spam the entire way through. Last time around, when we saw this in the first set of Grand Finals, it was again MREX pick and MREX win. Malashevsky lost this pick because he had trouble with a little bit of the stamina on some of the longer streams. 16 note streams in this map at 260 BPM. We'll see if MREX is able to capitalize on that once again and not miss aim breaking a random part of the map that is the danger with a pick like this is missing on something random so keeping the comfort keeping the nerves together for emrek is going to be more important than anything so now is going to be holding the stamina together on those longer streams this is burst speed five note nine note burst triples in this map he will have no trouble really just the long streams. Uh, um, this was a map that we kind of discussed, right, that Malachevsky might think about banning going into the second set here because it was a pretty comfy win for Emrek. Uh, decided to leave it up and we'll see if maybe he somehow taught himself to hit the longer streams in it in the 10 minutes between sets. Um, but there's also the chance that Emrek just FCs it this time instead of breaking a uh, slider breaking it, you know, 1700 combo. So... Yeah, the, the, the little the little miss aims they can catch you because you're probably comfortable enough with the the tapping if you're picking this. So the aim becomes the actual difficulty, and there's the breaks on the aim from Malachevsky, which is not the person I would expect to be missing on the aim technically speaking, but it still happened. And now it's Emrek off to the races once again on this pick. Oh, well, never mind. Did you have, did you have that on your bingo card? I Emrek did not. No, I did. not I did not have Emrek chain miss the stream on uh, Nomad Five on my bingo card for this match. Although it might end up being one of the most important squares on the card, as Malashevsky now combo lead act lead might just be able to take this. Malashevsky ran out of stamina on one of the, and then dropped on the aim and triple spam afterwards. Emrek just chain missing that entire pattern, and it might end up being the thing that swings this map towards Malashevsky. It is a sixteen thousand score lead and slowing for Emrek right now. Decreasing score lead, Malashevsky dropping hundreds, dropping accuracy, Emrek holding onto the act that is the only thing keeping him in the lead right now by the slimmest of margins, less than 5,000 score, and it should go over to Malashevsky oh. soon here. This combo lead is enough to bring this over. If Emrek can hold and if Malashevsky breaks, then Emrek can win this pick once again, but Malashevsky might just be able to pull off an incredible... In in I tried to mix incredibly and extremely. Incredibly <laughs> important breakpoint in this Nomad 5. There's the score lead finally over to his side. Can he hold through the ending of the match? Biting my nails in anticipation oh, as he holds oh. on through the streams. He hits the longest stream there at the end. Is it enough? I don't think he's gonna miss here at the ending. That should be enough to take the break point. And our first break point this time around, Aaron, is going to go to Malashevsky. Emrek now on the back foot for the first time in Grand Finals. And it's a break point on a Nomad 5. Like, we were talking about Malashevsky banning this map, not even allowing it to be played. And instead, he just turns into Malahimsky, I guess, and takes the victory. Bruh. That is a clutch clutch break point i know it's early in the match i know that there's a long way to go but taking the 3-1 lead and taking it on a speed map against emrek i mean that's practically unheard of right that's just not expected that's not supposed to happen and yet it happened anyway malashevsky continues to amaze us in one way or another clutching out points where he needs them and now he's got the break point in hand and he'll try to consolidate it 4-1 looks really bad if he can win this next pick. 
He got the Nomad 3, he got the Nomad 4. What is the next pick that you go for now if you're Malashevsky? Do you continue to switch it up or do you go back to one of those picks that you went to in the first set? Do you go into the hidden pool maybe or do you go back to a hard rock? It's going to be very interesting to see what he chooses here. Maybe even the DT4 if his tapping is feeling as good as his control aim on Nomad 3 was and his tapping on Nomad 5 was. Combine them all. It is! Okay, it's let's DT4. go! Nice. I was going to say, I think the interesting thing about the rest of the picks from Malashevsky is that a lot of them are breakpoints that have gone over to MREC in the first set of grand finals. This DT4 was an MREC win in the first set, which is not at all what we expected. This map is something that Malashevsky is known for being incredible on to the point where it's become in tournaments something that he is feared for just as much as, if not more, than the Nomad 4. So for him to lose this in the first round of Grand Finals was incredibly unexpected. And I think Emrek really overperforming during that map. Malashevsky underperforming a little bit. It was still close, but Emrek just popped off during that map. He's going to have to do so again if he wants to continue the trend of breakpointing this map against Malashevsky that he has started in that first round of Grand Finals. You can see the absolutely ridiculous oh aim control on these streams. These are 200 BPM. Malashevsky actually the first to drop once again. He drops first in that first set of Grand Finals as well. Can Emrek hold? Can he extend the combo lead? And now is the most important question that he needs to answer for us. If he can hold on to this combo lead for an extended period of time, it can do some major work in helping to guarantee this break point. But there's still a lot of map left. We're only a quarter of the way in, and he will not be holding it any longer than that. Malashevsky back with the combo lead once again as both players neck and neck in the accuracy department. Only a half percent act lead between the two of them. Now extended actually to a full percent by Malashevsky. A couple of act drops from Emrek going to make it possible for that extension to happen. And now... Really, it comes down, no, to a slider break once again by Malashevsky. Both these players, I think, going to be trading the combo back and forth here. So that early high combo from Emrek might just have enough of an impact if they continue these frequent trades over and over and over again. It comes down, in that case, to high accuracy and a single high combo most of the time in tournament. And, and this was going for so much of it already halfway through the same way it did the first set, right? You had a combo lead in favor of Emrek while the accuracy lead was being held onto by Malashevsky. This time around, the accuracy a lot closer, which actually does, of course, advantage Emrek even more because he's only down by half a percent compared to being down like 3% act last time. And again, holding onto a 300 plus combo lead. This is looking like possibly we're just rehashing the same script from set one. Uh, you know, the writer's strike is affecting us all, I guess. And <laughs> Emrek just looking for another break point on this map in much the same way as he did before by holding combo where Malashevsky couldn't despite the act discrepancy between the players. Malashevsky clearly proving himself more than competent on this type of map because of the act, but Emrek is just playing the combo game and he's playing it to perfection. Okay, never mind. He's not playing the combo game to perfection. No, but as he finds the drop, but Malashevsky also breaks, and I think that might just guarantee it. This score lead is 90k. I, I think that's just it. It's over, and that is once again a break point on double time four in favor of Emrek. It was close the first time and close the second time, but Malashevsky is still underage. No cigars for him. He is going to be losing it both times in a row in both sets, and Emrek. Going to be stealing that pick away twice now. And that, I think, makes the rest of this match very interesting and very difficult for Malashevsky. Because if you take the break points in the first set of Grand Finals as loops, okay, sure, Emrek won the DT4, but you can win that the next time around. Yeah, sure, Emrek won the Hidden 3, but maybe you can win that the next time around. Now, all of a sudden, it doesn't look like those are flukes anymore. It looks like Emrek is just better. And so, after twice in a row losing that DT4, I think you have to get rid of the D the Hidden 3, particularly, from the pick strategy entirely, if you are Malashevsky. And that leaves him with an entirely different pick pool outside of really just the Hard Rock 3, I think, is the only remaining map that he might want to pick that is the same from the first set of Grand Finals. So 
very different pick strategy, I think, is going to have to come out from Malashevsky during the next three picks of his, maybe picking into stuff like the Hidden 4 and the Hidden 1, rather than things like the Hidden 3. As for Emrek, mechanics, mechanics, mechanics. Hopefully he can convert on this mechanics map. It is an aim map, technically speaking, right? I mean, it is aim. Right? It's an aim map. It's, 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 just... an, it's, it's your simple everyday <laughs> CS 7.8 aim map. I mean, we all play that yeah, stuff all the time, I mean, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah, it's an aim map. It's definitely an aim map. It's, uh, it's the precision pick, though. CS 7.8. Emrek won this, and it was not close during the yeah. first set. This was, I believe, the second pick for Malashevsky, and it was a win by about 150,000 score for Emrek. To put that in context, Malashevsky's score was under 300k, so that is quite a high percentage win margin for Emrek. And I expect it to be relatively safe as a pick for him as well, although he has uh, completely flipped that on his head as he continues to find break after break after break in the intro. Yeah, this... Uh, are we sure we don't have it flipped around? Because this is how this started for Malashevsky last time. Yeah. And, like, this is exactly what happened to Malashevsky in the first set, and it, except this time it's happening to Emrek. Um, this is just, like, some deep reverse psychology stuff, I guess. I'm not really sure. Um, but we get into the map proper, and we'll see how they're feeling. And uh, it seems that neither player is really interested in actually comboing this map because they are both struggling quite heavily. And for good reason. This is incredibly difficult, but still... You would expect somebody to be able to hold somewhere, and I don't know the last time I saw a combo go over three digits. Maybe right now it'll happen for Emrak. There we go. Yeah, the notes uh, feel like they run away from you when they're small. Uh, a bit hard to find. It's like trying to... Uh, it's like trying to stomp ants. You have to be very, very careful exactly where you put your foot down, where you put your cursor down, as Malashevsky and Emrek trade misses at basically the exact same point, both of them holding on to minuscule combo, a slight act lead for Malashevsky, giving away once wow. again the combo by Emrek as we get into the last quarter here. It all comes down to whether Emrek can hold a little bit better combo than Malashevsky. The score incredibly close between these two players, less than a 10,000 score lead for Emrek right now. If he can hold the combo, it will go his way. Malashevsky continuing to break and the act lead now gone as well as Emrek holds three digit combo once again through the ending, a much closer Hard Rock 2 this time around, but still the win. It was not looking good for Emrak at the start of this map. He was down pretty much the entire map until the very ending, that last quarter, deciding the entire map as Emrak, just that ever so slightly more consistent player in the last quarter, holding on to the combo where Malashevsky could not. Yeah, Mel, uh, excuse me, Emrek kind of kind of showing why he had that high precision stat. Uh, you know, we I think I think commonly think of him as as the mechanics player, but uh, as it turns out, as befits you know the number one player in the world, he's pretty good at a lot of different things, um, and clearly proving here that he is capable in back to back maps of some crazy finger and aim control, and then some just incredibly tiny circle precision. Emrek breaking out the entire bag of tricks. He's got his toolbox ready to go. And we're going to go into a new one again. We're going to go hidden four. So Malashevsky continuing to make the adjustments. Picks up the Nomad three to start off this set. Now with his fourth pick, he's going to go into the hidden four. We saw Emrek play this against Enri in that first match in the loser's final. He won it, but only with a 394k. And so I mentioned in our little break in between matches that maybe this would be a map that Malashevsky would look into. If he thinks he can get a 400, you know, 450k on it, it's definitely worth looking into because Emrek heavily popped off on that map. But the question is, you know, like you said, are we considering these pop-offs or is this just the standard for Emrek? And, uh, well, the answer is hard to determine as of yet because both players struggle a lot <laughs> with that intro. To be, to be fair to them, that intro is pretty hard. Um one of the hardest patterns in the whole map actually so struggling with the intro not exactly unheard of for anyone coming into this map both players holding on through the cut and space streams Ooh. Malashevsky finally dropping on the entrance into another one of these stream patterns Emrek also going to drop the score lead extremely small but 20k when both players are just around 100k is still not to be 
shaken at. Finally, a slider break comes through from Malashevsky. Did have the combo lead, almost got the score lead off of it. As now halfway through, both players hovering around 90% accuracy. Both players right around 100 combo or so. At 120k for both players as well. Emrek finds the chain miss on some of the streams. Cut streams, Malashevsky able to hit them along with the doubles afterwards. Does finally find a miss on one of those patterns, but not going to find the same chain misses as Emrek on some of the longer streams. Both players finding the oh. chain miss there, but Malashevsky ahead by about 10,000 score, pretty much due to accuracy right now. 2% act lead for him, where Emrek finds chain misses most of the time. Malashevsky is finding smaller misses here and there. Big contributor to the act lead for Malashevsky. Both players hitting the speed pattern, but Malashevsky breaking right afterwards, and now Emrek combo lead going into the ending. Less than a 5,000 score lead. Is this enough for Emrek to take yet another break point against Malashevsky? It just may happen. Once again, as we get the ending of the map, Emrek, will he chain miss the ending or will he hold? He does find the chain miss, but so does Malashevsky. And that is going to be another breakpoint for Emrek. Four to three with the next pick in bracket reset. Goodness me. He, Emrek is just winning maps today. It feels like he has no business winning. He just finds the combo and finds the score seemingly out of nowhere. He's, it's just, he's behind in combo, he's behind in score, he's behind in act, until all of a sudden he just isn't anymore. And he wins another point in the same fashion. I mean, this is actually defining clutch performance from Emrek. It, you know, he could so easily be down, what, five to, five to two, I suppose, right now? Like, very, very easily. And instead, it's a 4-3 to three lead in his favor because he's just finding those scores. He's putting up the combo wherever he can get it. And now in the lead with the break point, 4-3, to three, going into a map that he won before. Now, we talked about this map particularly a fair amount. That Malashevsky break at the end of the second key eye felt like it was really just the end of the map right there. Malashevsky very clearly tilted at that miss last time. Yeah. So if he can hit it this time and they're on similar combo... Maybe the outcome could be different. This is one that could very easily go either way. Just blatant, raw aim mechanics and nothing else. I think this is the mental boom strategy for Emrek. Pick the map that you know tilted him last time around to tilt him again. And that way, that way you just keep winning the picks during this part of the bracket reset. But actually, it might be working. He already found a miss from Malachevsky. Oh, man. So... Emrek now, early combo lead, not an early act lead. Once again, Malashevsky with that act lead. But Emrek, early combo lead on this. I don't think it matters all that much. Again, this match really long, three and a half minutes. It's also eight and a half star team throughout pretty much the entire map. Very easy to find multiple misses in a map like this. But these players are so consistent at this high star rating game. It makes me wonder whether they really will find multiple misses on something like this or not. As uh, I think pretty much any other player putting up scores like this in match would have their PC checked, but uh, <laughs> not for not for these two. <laughs> They're just that good, man. Let's. I, I'm really interested in the middle Ki once again. If either of them miss during that part, uh, there's another miss. Oh, the, the, the mental boom strat. Oh, the, the cursor dancing. Strat. I'm telling you, Aaron. I'm telling uh. you, that is the strat. That is the strat for Emrek right now. Take the map you know tilted him last time around and tilt his ass off again. That is it's uh. working. It's working I, right now. I love it. I mean, the mental game is, you know, in, in 1v1 is so important because you don't have a team backing you up. You can't just sit out for a map. You can't, like, you don't have people, you know, giving you, like, encouragement. You're all on your own. You know, it, it goes from being a basketball game into all of a sudden it's a tennis match. You know, the, the 4v4 instead turning into 1v1, you have to do it all on your own and you get mental boomed a lot more easily and the opponent knowing that can take advantage of it and that's exactly what Emrek is doing here. He's also taking advantage of the fact that he's goddamn good at this map. Um, yeah. He's still full comboing by the way. Almost 99% accuracy and not showing any signs of stopping anytime soon either. I think even uh, without the misses from... Oh, up. oh, oh come on. <laughs> Dude, I, look, I'm going to cry. Okay, it's eight and a half stars. It's eight and a half stars. That is not my fault. You can't blame me for that. Okay, but okay? Emrek's recommended difficulty is like nine stars. This is nothing for him. This is actually piss low. Okay, but this is hard rock aim. He doesn't farm that, all right? He farms hard rock aim. All right? That's my, that's my <laughs> alibi, and I'm sticking with it. Okay? <laughs>
Uh, it's still, I mean, it's a ridiculous play regardless. It's still gonna be more than good enough to take the dub on this map, but man. <laughs> Oh, his recommended difficulty is 11.1 stars. That doesn't there. seem that doesn't seem right. Why would it recommend like how? how? <laughs> no, uh, but I, I guess. What is the algorithm for that? Uh, that makes based no off sense. Your total PP, I believe. So. Oh my god. Yeah. Well, it's gonna be another win on Hard Rock One for Emrek, and uh, once again, it was just never in doubt after one break from Malishevsky in that uh, early Ki. Couple misses in the uh, later portion, notwithstanding on those big back and forths. The lead is 250,000. And Nemrek, just like that, all of a sudden it's five to three. It feels like he is running away with this set in a way that he did kind of with the first set as well. He just finds the momentum and he takes off with it. It's like Usain Bolt just gets in front and you never see him again, except, you know, in, on the podium while you're looking up at him on the top step. Well,. I mean, this is kind of the way this match has to go for Emrek to win. Again, I feel like a broken record saying this, but Meloshevsky has a decided advantage on the tiebreaker. If it gets the tiebreaker in this match, it's pretty much over already for Emrek, right? This is uh, the problem with this type of tiebreaker is that Meloshevsky is just so, so good at it. And so Emrek has to win in dominant fashion. He cannot let this go to tiebreaker. 7-5 sure is one thing, but right now he's on pace once again for a win off of the earlier break points as we go once more into Hard Rock 3. This was the closest map in the previous set of Grand Finals. It came down to less than 3,000 points. I believe it was 2,904, if memory serves. And it was a win for Malashevsky. But we went into this map thinking it would be a bit a bit less close than 2,900 yeah. points apart. Because yeah. yeah. this, this on paper is a very, very strong Malashevsky pick, but Emrek has been uh, tearing it up, both the match and the paper, respectively. Throughout this entire weekend, this whole day of matches has just been Emrek showing that he doesn't care what the script is supposed to be. So, a, a dangerous pick once again for Malashevsky, despite what other people may think uh, going into the map. Yeah, and you know, you look at that score from the last set. You know, I, you, you play the game of box score watching out here. Malashevsky, 826 combo, 96 ack. 377k to win by 3,000 points. Meanwhile, Emrek had only three misses versus 10 misses and barely lower accuracy. It was just the max combo that Malashevsky really managed to pick up that score advantage on. So if Emrek is able to turn that lower miscount into a matching high combo, this could easily be a, an actually one-sided win in his favor just based on how he played it before, if he's able to cut down on things like slider breaks or just where the location of his misses are. But as of right now, it's just both guys going off as they're expected, it feels like in this match at this point to be doing. 99.3 ack, by the way, from Elshevsky already, once again, building that ack lead, but it's matching FC combos. And that's really what matters is we're already a third of the way through and have not seen a single break as of yet. And again, it just gets terrifying. You see these break, you see these combos getting so big. And like sooner or later, somebody has to break if you don't know who it's gonna be. So you're just kind of gnawing on your fingernails in, in uh, a little bit of anxiety as to what's gonna happen when we get into the middle portion into the back half of the map. 826 max combo was the highest we got from either player in the previous match in grand finals, both of them already well past that oh. point, hitting the wiggle into the halfway point of the map. This section so, so difficult. Malashevsky, the first one to break. Emrek still holding onto the combo, hitting the high velocity sliders, hitting the slider oh. jump patterns, hitting the axel, hitting the slider bursts as well. And this might just be Emrek showing up in a way that I think no one imagined he could this weekend. This was by the books, meant to be a Malashevsky win. Finally, a miss comes through for Emrek. It's a slider break on one slider pattern, but the combo is not there for Malashevsky to capitalize. He has broken multiple times in this difficult section, as now he does have the combo lead, but the act advantage a little bit with Emrek, and the score lead almost 100k in Emrek's favor, 84, 85,000 score, as he continues to hold his combo as well. Malashevsky 
has a show match set up with Vaxe last weekend. And he was going into it before this weekend as the favorite for grand finals in Corsair's clothes and as a player who people were talking about as the potential next greatest tournament player of all time. Emrek now poised to take another break point and to put himself at 6-3, looking to completely change that narrative altogether and write one for himself. And that break is going to seal this pick up 6-3 for Emrek by the end of it, surely with that next slider break for Malachewski. Yeah, I mean... This is Emrek just ascending to another level of play. I mentioned it before, and I'll go back to it again. I have said for at least two years now, if not more, that if Emrek wanted to become the best tournament player in the world, if that was something that he decided he wanted to devote himself to, he could do it, and it wouldn't be... There would be no way they could stop him because his skill cap is just so ridiculous. And it's performances like this that really, I feel, lend a little more credence to my little pet theory there. Because the things that he can do on these ridiculously high skill cap pools are simply out of like the realm of possibility for almost anyone else in the game. And once again, this set, he has just gone off another victory. And like I said, it was so close in the first set on this map. It was less than 3,000 points. It felt like if Emrek could just cut down on the slider breaks, could just cut down on any sort of combo misses and increase that max combo, he could win this in a runaway. And here we are at 100k win. And he's done exactly just that. And he's given himself multiple match points in this bracket reset. Coming into his own next pick, 6-3, to three, goes the lead, one point from becoming Corsair's close champion. What else can you say besides this is the pop-off weekend of all time for Emrek? I mean, Malashevsky beat his score from the previous match by 50k almost, 45k. And it just doesn't matter. Emrek going up almost 150,000 score over his own score from the previous match. And I hear no mod one in the background. Oh boy. All right. This map, uh, this map is something. This map is something. I'm honestly a little surprised we don't see a map like Reason get picked here. Although if Emrek is feeling shaky on the Hard Rock flow aim, then very understandable. And he has looked very, very good on the snap aim all match long. Malashevsky has looked like he has had a little bit of trouble with that snap aim pretty much throughout the entire match. So I think this pick does make a lot of sense from that perspective. It's jump aim, it's 8.7 stars. It's also a little bit of a speed map, a little bit of a tech map, um, and a lot of awkward jumps all throughout this map. Back and forth jumps all over the place, wide angle jumps all over the place, and some really just uncomfortable patterns throughout the map. So despite it being AR-10, CS 3.7, not necessarily the poor jump aim no mod one that a lot of players have come to expect out of this slot. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. I actually, can, when you consider how straightforward, like, slot maps so many of the customs in this pool are, this really flips that on its head. It is not just a standard, you know, sky flame barking mad dog, etc. Nomad one. This is something really different. But it's something that it feels like Emrek has just kind of waited on and knew he could win regardless. And I think this is just how he can put an exclamation mark on this match. He can put an exclamation mark on this entire tournament. There is a slider break, but he has already taken a 45,000 point lead off the back of a couple of early misses from Malashevsky. And there is still plenty of time. This is a lengthy enough map, but it's going to be a lot of work for Malashevsky to bring this back. Did have a very good score on this against Enry as well. 1100 max combo, 500k for Emrek against Enry earlier today. And basically just looking to recreate it, but not going to be so here in the middle of the map. Finds another break, actually. And this is maybe the opportunity that Malashevsky needs to start up a comeback. He has to win this pick from Emrek, his own pick, and then one other Emrek pick afterwards in order to force the tiebreaker here. But it is still doable. He finds the slider break afterwards. Emrek now on a bit of a combo lead, but the score is still very close. 20k the score lead for Emrek right now, as neither player really able to put up a decisive combo advantage at any point in the map. Currently, it's with Emrek, 
But this section, not really pure aim in the slightest. I mean, this, this is not your this is not your grandma's Nomad one. This, this, this is a yeah, very this is, different map This is map actually from Nomad 4 again. Yeah. <laughs> Secret it's actually Nomad, Nomad 5, 240 BPM burst all over the place, too. <laughs> but both of these players handling it pretty well. Neither of them is missing during that section. It all is coming down to the last quarter right now. It's really extended to about 30, 40k by MREC right now. As both of them hit that entire jump sequence, Malashevsky, can he hold on? Will Emrek break the two most important questions of this match right now to determine whether Emrek goes home Corsair's closed champion or Malashevsky gets another shot at forcing the tiebreaker out of this man who is playing possessed. Ah. And Malashevsky wow. will find a miss on the cross screen corner jumps. Emrek holds. And that is going to be the match. That is going to be the tournament. Emrek will be your Corsi's closed champion after losing in winner's finals. Back through loser's finals, through bracket reset. 7-3, 7-3, and 7-3. Never any question about whether it was going to be close for him. 21 wins and 9 losses in the grand finals weekend for Emrek in a show of dominance that was completely unexpected based on how these players were performing before Grand Finals. Incredible play from Emrek during this entire weekend. Yeah, I mean, just outrageous how well Emrek played this entire day. I think all of these matches were expected to be so close and so contested. And then Emrek came out and just said, no, thank you. <laughs> no, thank you. I am just going to uh, to blast my way through all of these matches. And I mean, look at this. Look at this recap. Malashevsky was up three one and didn't win another point. It yep. felt like he maybe figured something out in between the sets, in between that first set and the reset. Maybe it felt like Malashevsky had sorted out whatever went wrong in the first set and was going to be able to make this one interesting. And then DT4 happened, and then Hard Rock 2 happened, and Emmerich was just off to the races just like that. He ties it up 3-3, three to three, wins the next four maps in a row as well. It, I mean, the, the ability to, to become that great of a frontrunner, to get those tiny little advantages, and then to go off to the races with them, is, I think, really, in this stage, reserved for the best of the best. And Emrek has proved today that uh, he decidedly deserves to be considered amongst that elite company. I mean... You know, for for a while, people were talking about Malashevsky as potentially the best tournament player in the world, and I think a lot of people had this idea of him as pretty much unbeatable in tournaments, not quite at the level of Vaxa yet, but pretty much unbeatable in tournaments, and now that is just sort of flipped on its head as Emrek beats him not once, but twice, both times 7-3 to three on the hardest pool you are going to find in any major tournament. So now the question becomes, I guess, like, how does Emrek or what? I guess my question now is, what do we see from Emrek next in terms of major tournaments? That's not something for him to answer right now, but I'm just looking forward to seeing more of this type of performance from Emrek in major tournaments because he clearly has it in him to be wow. the best tournament player in the world. He is already the best player, full stop, skill cap wise, in the world, and there is not a question about that. But I have this is one this word. is undeniable proof he is he is the best tournament player and can be if he wants to be. I have one word for you, and it's round table. Because we know we're gonna be seeing him there and gonna get to see some more absurd plays for sure but yeah i mean where does he go after that what other you know are we gonna see more big high skill cap 1v1 tournaments will we see him you know continuing to get top performances in 4v4 tournaments do we see somehow some way a, a true ascendance of australia and owc that one seems maybe a little less likely unfortunately just with the nature <laughs> of their teams yeah. over the past few years but uh it definitely feels like the sky's the limit, as it has felt for Emrek for some time. You know, his ascendance to number one in solo play, his victory in YSC 2021, his performances in things like perennial Corsace Open, and now here in Corsace Close. 
winning, I think, one of the more competitive 1v1s we've seen in a long time in terms of the players involved. I think the, this was well, probably the most yeah. competitive 1v1 I've seen since maybe YSC 2021. I, I think a lot of players haven't really invested a lot into, into 1v1 uh, as compared to a couple of years ago. This is, like, just in terms of the caliber of player, I think this is the most competitive one that I've seen. At least, at least since then. And the things we saw from people that maybe we didn't necessarily expect, like the performance from Enry in this tournament, for instance, was far beyond, I think, what maybe a lot of people anticipated. Um, obviously, you know, you've got kind of the known quantities tier in, in the Grand Finals, and Rick Malashevsky, you could kind of see that coming. Um, but there were so many players that played so well in this entire tournament that it was just really a pleasure to watch from start to finish. And uh, by the way, Emrek, 900 combo. Just, yeah, you know, for a... fun. Literally just for fun. Yes, yeah, so this map is uh, 9.4 stars, by the way. Um, this is a 9.4 star, no mod. I don't know why it's not AR-10. I think this map should have just been AR-10 only 10, but like, yeah. This is, um, this is 9, 9.4 stars. Um, well, when your recommended difficulty is 11 stars, I guess this is just <laughs> casual gameplay for you. I suppose so, right? Um, yeah, I think a lot of the players in this tournament really impressed. Henry, four votes among them, right? Um, but I think for a lot of people, seeing players like Tikito sort of come back into his own was a very big deal. He has felt sort of less impactful as a tournament player I think in the last year or so than he too and to see him play sports in this tournament is also I think very big for him he is obviously still one of the best tournament players around but I think having that sort of performance in a big open rank 1v1 like this is really huge for him um, the same goes for Suwagi and Thriller who kind of maintain their spots among the top echelon of tournament players I think more interesting among a lot of the Stories is, for example, like Neneric being able to go six to five against MCY. Uh, he dropped out 0-2 out of this tournament because he had to FF his first round against the Koli Bed and then lost in tiebreaker to MCY4. But I think that one match was really, really good for him, and a lot of people I don't think expected him to be able to perform as well as he did on the non-speed picks in that match. So. Really interesting results from a lot of players in this tournament. Check out the main sheet if you're interested to see exactly how all the players uh, did in this tournament. It's worth looking into a lot of them as well on YouTube if you're interested in watching some of those past matches, including Nineric versus MCY4. Yeah, it's... Uh, I mean, this is quickly, you know, in, in only a couple of iterations, like, become one of the most fun... 1v1 tournaments because A, there just aren't that many 1v1 tournaments in the first place. I feel like we need more like open rank, super high level top player 1v1s, but also just the map pools lend themselves to really exciting matches and you get some just insane performances. So I'm curious to see where this leads for some of these players, you know, kind of the ascending arc for players like Enry, for players like, and then for, you know, for other guys like Malchevsky, Emrek, Suwagi, who've kind of been at the top, and Takito, who's trying to get back to the top perhaps. Though, I mean, obviously, defending a WC champion, you know, kind of goes a long way for you. Um, Certainly helps. It, yeah. It's 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 a great showcase, though, for what people are capable of. Makes me excited for Corsets Open as well later this year, because I think we just always expect really exciting things out of this tournament series. I'm definitely excited now that you mentioned it also for round table. Uh, the pools there, I will put a disclaimer, are not going to be as hard. As well, why not? That's on LAN, so, you know, people are uh, jet-lagged and also not on their setups. It's not going to be as hard. But I'm really looking forward to seeing for events like that also the COV tournament here as well, for those who are able to make it out to COV. I think it's going to be very, very fun to watch. Uh, definitely had fun casting it last year. That was a great experience. Very fun to cast LAN stuff. And, uh, you know, as a, as a closing note on this match, I feel like it's very fitting that Emrek is beating Malashevsky on this tiebreaker as well. Because, of because throughout the match, we were talking about, you know, Emrek has to win before tiebreaker. This tiebreaker is Malashevsky favored. And at the end of it all, Emrek just wins it anyway in the show match. Because why not? 
win without tiebreaker sure go to tiebreaker still wins anyway and that is the kind of mark of dominance that i feel like emrek was looking to leave this weekend three wins in a row seven three on every win not really a question about whether he is the better tournament player at this point he is when he wants to be the best tournament player in the world Yes, we have converted another one. <laughs> we have converted another one to the Church of Emrek, ladies and gentlemen. Dio live on stream has joined the gang. And how can you not at the after altar that weekend, of the man. world's best you... player? Watching. Wow. I think that's pretty much all we have. Unless you have more to talk about, Aaron. Uh, match to death. So. Yeah, I mean, this has been remarkable. I, Emrek, what more can you say? Dude's just dominant, and he proved it. Back to back to back, seven threes. Unbelievable stuff. And that is going to be it for the Corsace Closed Grand Finals. Congratulations once again to Emrek and to Maloshevsky and Enry in second and third place. They'll be contacted by all of the hosts and all that for prizes later on. But congratulations to Emrek for cementing himself as the Corsace Closed Champion in 2023.